Hello, my name's Isaiah, and this guide covers overclocking the RTX 280. Now, this does apply to other Turing video cards, but if you're coming from YouTube, I do have a written guide in the link below on overclockers.com. So, if you are new to overclocking, I suggest for the over the NVIDIA Auto OC is to use MSI Afterburner. I noticed the newest update to their software actually has improved a lot of functions. Uh, before, Precision X was a very good uh, program to use, and it's, I think it's a little bit more clean and easy to use as far as layout goes, but F and, uh, MSI Afterburner actually has more functions. So we're going to close Precision X for now. So inside MSI Afterburner, what we want to do is set a custom fan profile. So you want to do is go over to fan, and hit enable fan profile and hit OK and then it will tell it to update. And it also if you do want to adjust the voltage you can go under unlock voltage and hit OK for that. I usually leave the voltage alone but that's up to your preference especially if you're new to overclocking just don't worry about it. Uh, second off you want to do is set your power limit and temperature limit to maximum. Now as I explained in my written guide and the boost 4.0 video this isn't actually set the temperature that high, all it does is allow the video card to hit that temperature if it needs to. It gives more of a wiggle room for overclocking. So with that out of the way, now we're going to go ahead and go to the auto OC function. So if you were to click on the little radio symbol right here, it opens the frequency editor and uh, all you need to do is go over to the OC scanner and then tell it to scan. If you tell it to test, it's just going to test what your current settings are uh, based on what you do, but if you want to scan, it will automatically create a graph for you. Now, you don't want to have your benchmark running in the background when you do this, and if I do apply my custom query, which I've done before already, and apply it, you can actually see how the the curve has adjusted each one of these points and gave me the best performance it thinks it can give me. Now, don't believe everything you see because if you were to hit test, it gave me a 90% feedback saying at stock voltage and stock speed. So it's only 90% sure at stock settings is going to work. So the test function doesn't always come back to the right results. And the scan function doesn't always come back to the right results. But at least it's better than having to set your settings yourself. Okay, so with the auto OC function completed on the afterburner, MSI afterburner, I jump back to Precision X because I think it's a little bit easier to give an overview of um, your settings. It's easy to see all the parameters going on. Now, it doesn't matter which program you use. You shouldn't use both at the same time because it's going to overwrite each other, but pick one and go with it. In the written guide, I have both covered, so it's really up to you, but in the video, I'm going to stick with Precision X1. So just like MSI uh, Afterburner, you want to make sure you have the power limit set to a maximum. And then as far as fan profile, you want to go ahead and tab over and then turn on a custom fan profile and then adjust the curve based on what you want. Um, this is set for 100% fan at 90 Celsius. Well, the video card maxes out at 88, so you kind of want 100% a little bit early. So let's go ahead and set it to 84 or so. This is something you can do yourself um, at your free will. So let's go ahead and back into the manual overclocking. So this part is going to be for beginners or intermediate users that want to uh, do basic overclocking. The first thing I like to do after setting those is open my favorite benchmark tool. I used Heaven Benchmark because it's very flexible. It has a, it has a loop function which is good. A lot of programs don't have this. This is a great one to get your settings really close and then you can finalize it by running 3D marks or a different benchmark or playing your favorite game and see if the clocks are steady. Now with that out of the way, the first thing I like to do is deal with memory first because memory is a very forgiving program or not program but very forgiving when overclocking. Um, I have found, this is going to be a quick version, but I have found that if you go 100 at a time, not 10, if you go at 100 at a time and then in the background kind of watch and see what's going on. I'm going to throw a video up here. You can see there's artifacts. And if I freeze the frame, you can see the artifacts, uh, what it's showing up and how it looks. 
and it gets really creepy and sometimes distorted depending on if the memory is uh, failing or not as far as not failing I should say but if it gets too hot or if the memory is too far out of the frequency or too high of the range it'll start artifacting because it's uh, memory glitches. So I suggest going at 100 at a time until you hit the limit there and then back it off. So I know this video card briefly, briefly can do um, 775. If about 10, 15 minutes later, it will start artifacting. So I, what I have done after a good few hours of testing is found out my video card is limit is 750. You should find a range between 500 and 800 for most video cards. Now, this is not set in stone. It doesn't mean your video card will be higher or lower. It is something that you have to kind of, within that range, 5 to 700 or 7, 800 is kind of where you're going to be. Now, once you set that, kind of watch the screen. Like I said, you can see the, the video I recorded uh, of artifacting. And just make sure that your video card is not doing that. And once you're comfortable with those settings, just go back and put it back to stock settings. And then we're going to move on to the clock speed. Now this is very unforgiving. If you go too high, it will crash your computer, crash the software. Sometimes it'll just freeze up. It, it's kind of all over the place. So you're not going to get really too far. Maybe 170 is probably the highest you're going to see in most cards. So instead of just jumping to like say 170, you're going to crash the video card. I suggest starting at 50. Set it. Watch it for a while. Make sure your temperatures are okay. This, once again, I have done this before, so it's kind of a quick version of that. I don't want to bore you with hours of watching me just slowly move on. Um, then 75, and you keep going up. So I know this card is good until 179, and I shouldn't do it while it's recording, but I have a video of this. And then at 180, the video card will crash. And you see here, I type in 179, and then I type in 180, apply, and it immediately crashes. However, I did find after a while of playing video games that 175 even to 179 this still crashes. So I've find, found out that 150 is closer to my limit there. So once you've found that comfortable number you're with, it's going to go up and down. It's going to take you a while to actually get pinpoint what the exact number is. You want to go ahead and set it back to stock speed again. This is when you get to the point, oops. This is when you get to the point of combining it all together. So now we know the video card's maximum temperature, or not temperature, maximum range for both clock speed and memory speed. So what I like to do is first set the memory about 100 lower than what I found max. So let's go with 650. And then as far as frequency for the video card, I also like to go about 25 lower. So let's go 125 and hit apply. And the reason why I do this is because I've noticed, especially the last generation cards also, is that if you have both of them at a max speed, usually, it's without fail, it will start having problems. It will artifact or crash on you. It might not be right away. It might be in 20 minutes. It might be two hours. It might be five hours of gaming. But eventually, the video card will start crashing on you, whether due to heat or just uh, the imbalance of load, where I said... This program of heaven is not having enough load to really push the card. And now it used to be, but not anymore. These cards are a lot more powerful than they used, you know, the, the last generation. So these cards need a lot more, um, a heavier benchmark, I should say. Uh, but unfortunately, there isn't a benchmark that has a free looping feature in it. If you want a looping, you have to kind of pay money for other versions of software. So this one's free and it has a good looping function in it. So... I suggest starting with a little bit lower, go play your video game, let it sit for a while, uh, maybe do a stress benchmark like a 3D Mark or pretty much anything that you think can stress the video card and see if it crashes. If it doesn't crash, then raise it a little bit. So let's go with 700. And then this, maybe I'll try that and it doesn't work, it doesn't crash, and I go 150. And you just keep doing that until eventually you hit a limit where you can't go too high with either one. So either your GPU is limited or your clock speed is limited, or sometimes you can lower your memory frequency and have a higher clock speed. And it really depends on how you want to 
use your video cards. Some people like higher speed memory. Some people like higher speed, uh, higher clock speed. And I think it depends on your application, what you're using it for. But generally speaking, any overclock is going to be better than your stock speed. So really it's a win-win for everybody. All right, so thank you for checking out this video. It's a really quick overview of how to overclock a RTX video card. Now I'm using a RTX 280, but this does apply to 270 and it does apply to the 280 Ti. It's the same idea, but your overclock settings are gonna be different. If you did like this video, check out the written guide. It's gonna be more in depth. And of course, I do have a advanced guide uh, right next to this in the link below that covers more of a custom curve and maybe not push how to push your video card without actually hitting the limit.